couple quick things about maintenance. Uh, helicopters vibrate. Helicopters vibrate a lot. Uh, what you want to do, even when the when you buy the Healy and it comes in, you're going to want to check all of the screws on the on the helicopter. Check them all. Uh, of course, you're going to need your uh, a decent set of tools, some fine uh, Phillips head screwdrivers, uh, Allen wrench set. Um, I've got some individual Allen wrenches, uh, the the L type that had the balls on the end. I've also got this, uh, basically Allen wrench set that's all together. Uh, I like this just because I know I'm not going to lose anything and uh, sometimes this works for me, sometimes it doesn't, but I'll carry this out with me to the field. It's very convenient. Uh, once again, you're going to want to, uh, when you when you buy the helicopter, you're going to want to check all the uh, all the screws, the Allen heads, the Phillips and so forth. Make sure everything is, is uh, tightened down. Um, you don't want anything coming loose and every uh, you know if you can every day uh, check your 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 fasteners to make sure that none of them have come loose really look at anything that is metal screwing into plastic like the uh, like onto the servos you're gonna want to check to make sure that there's nothing loose and so forth you don't have a servo uh, screw coming loose that would be a very bad thing um, you know, uh, periodically check everything uh, because things rattle and they come loose. And if it comes loose in flight, that's a pretty bad thing. One thing I like about this helicopter over, say, a, uh, a eSky Belt CP or an Exceed G2, um, and one of the things that makes this, uh, you know, more expensive helicopter and good value is I like the way that the fly bar weights are not integrated into the paddles you can see the fly bar weight here is separate and uh, you can either remove that or just uh, loosen the the allen screw which I've already done here the grub screw there and move it all the way in um, into the uh, the head and what that's going to do is as the blades turning and the pitch changes uh, for the uh, for that particular paddle it's going to make that paddle go up higher which is going to make the blades change more and make it increase your roll rates it'll it'll make a more sensitive helicopter um, faster responding and so forth uh, so you got to be aware of that for the advanced pilot um, they're going to want to have the helicopter to be zippy um, and have more uh, response and so forth so they can just um, take that and move it in for for uh, the first flights I advise you to just leave it out and let it be stable um, uh, you might find that you prefer to have it out you might prefer prefer you know as time goes on that you want to have it more responsive well moving those fly bar weights uh, on both sides on both paddles in say halfway uh, or in all the way uh, will make it a zippier helicopter um, and twitchier too so uh, whenever you move it in if you're not going to move it in from one extreme to the other you're going to want to definitely take a good measurement to make sure that it's balanced uh, and not out of balance otherwise it could cause some vibrations and so forth but make sure that you tighten that down when you do move it uh, so that it so that you don't have it coming loose on you in flight one thing I use on uh, my helicopters on the moving parts especially the parts that move fast is tri-flow oil uh, I don't know if you're going to find a bottle that looks like this, but uh, this is this particular bottle is about 15 years old um, that I've had. Uh, I had one bottle that long, um, but basically the TriFlow oil is good for places like on the uh, the main shaft where the swash plate moves up and down, any of the ball joints uh, that are rotating and so forth, and also like on the tail slider you can put a drop on each side of the tail slider here and there uh, to help lubricate it. That really helps with it when it's spinning and so forth um, so that you have good smooth movement. Can you fly the Healy without it? Of course you can. Um, but the TriFlow really helps with the lubrication on uh, any kind of the uh, surface where the shaft's moving and so forth like that. Like I said, uh, the ball joints. Um, you, just, you don't want to be greasing things up really heavily 
some people do it. I don't like to use it on, say, the main gear. Um, I don't advise to use it on the main gear. Um, some people use like a white lithium grease on the main gear. Um, uh, that's a preference that you probably want to research and ask people around what they do. Uh, once again, do you need to take this Healy out and lube everything up before you fly it? No. Um, after you've flown it 10, 15 times, are you going to want to think about lubricating things? Yes. So by then you should uh, have researched uh, what your plan of attack is. I mentioned if your radio did not have a built-in timer. Um, for the most part, uh, if you got a good radio, it's got a built-in timer. Uh, some other radios don't. Um, this is a quite an old timer uh, from Radio Shack, and I just took epoxy and put a uh, clothesline hanger on it. And then what I do is I've got the radio, and it doesn't really go with this one, but I just clip it on onto the top onto the antenna there, and you got yourself a little timer built into your uh, your radio. I asked a uh, Healy mentor of mine many years ago. I said, "What's the best advice for a beginner? What what can you tell me that's really real good advice?" And he said, "The most important advice is take all the advice that you get with a grain of salt." Uh, Anything that I say here, um, you might even want to go and research and ask other people. Uh, some people might disagree with me. Some people might agree with me. Um, if you do your research and the internet is great, lots of places to find online, you can usually find enough people agreeing with something and then you go ahead and you take the advice. But uh, take any advice that anybody gives you with a grain of salt. Just because one person says it doesn't mean that it's perfectly right. It might be right for you. It might be wrong for you. Um, you might, they might tell you something, and uh, maybe they've gotten away with it, but other people haven't. Uh, so do your research. Um, don't believe everything that you hear. And uh, some people uh, are right 90 something percent of the time, but in other cases they can be wrong. Um, so uh, do your research. Find out uh, what other people are saying. Um, it's a good thing to get online, uh, like at rcdiscuss.com, and ask questions. Um, other websites and so forth ask questions. If you uh, don't feel you want to take the chance, ask more questions. Um, but once again, take everything with a grain of salt.